Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Football Daft, the daftest Scottish football podcast around. I'm Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man smaller than the list of Premiership clubs voting for the league not to be concluded. It's Chris Toe. How are mm. you, my man? I'll be sure I ain't until that fucking introduction there, you <laughs> Listen, you are literally about the length of a Kit Kat taller than me, you fucker. Yeah, I'm a Kit Kat, you're a fucking walnut whip. Aye, but I've got four fingers. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> and I was going to say, let's, let's welcome the other member of the team, but he's no here today. The he's no here today. He's either online trying to order Wispachinos in bulk, or he's hanging about with Drew McIntyre online, I don't know. He's doing something. Uh, no, uh, Gredo's, Gredo's got a, a wee family emergency yeah. this week, so he's no, he's not going to be here this week. So, listen. you, mate. Listen, I can't, I can't, I don't know if I can let him off the, the hook with this one. I had a family emergency the last two weeks, and I've been here. I didn't want to see that there, mate, know what I mean? You know but, what I mean? No, but listen, in all seriousness, uh, I hope everything's sorted for Gredo, um, and he'll hopefully be back next week. I think he'll be back next week, he will. So what have you been doing this week? I know we've all been kind of cooped up in the house hey, again. Mate, What's what a happen? fucking, what a week I've had it, man. Honestly. Right? I bought a dog. As you do when you're fucking in isolation. By Why a dog. not? It's just because I wanted somebody else to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog is it? It's a Lassa Apso. Um, it's a wee boy, his name's Archie, and he was born two days ago. So nice. I, I bought, a, bought a dog. I thought you might have called him Shinsuke or Naka or, or Sinclair. Aye, uh, uh, Sinky. Sinky, Sinky. Your favourite Celtic player? Uh, the, uh, John Collins is my favourite all time, but they two are definitely up there. <laughs> anyway, anyway, right, uh, so let me tell you, right, so I was like, right, what can I do? So I looked out the back garden, right, right. and we've, de- we've been decorating the Wayne's room, right, and uh, so quite a lot of cardboard boxes and that waiting to get picked up. And I looked out the back, and remember it was one day's fuck day? Aye. They were everywhere, mate. They were oh. everywhere, right, so... I to, took it, me and the way and went out picked them up. It took about 20 minutes for us to get them all back together. So that wood on top of them and all that so they won't blow away. But when I removed, when, when I picked up the last box, there was a full pepperoni pizza lying in the middle of my garden. Right? And it's, it's incinerated to beyond recognition. The only reason I know that it's a pepperoni pizza is because the wee bits of pepperoni. On, honestly, Right, it looked, I don't know how it got into the middle of my garden. I've no burnt a pizza since I was about fucking 10 year old. And a genuinely, a perfectly conserved pepperoni pizza burnt to a cinder in the middle of my garden. Now, somebody needs to inform me how this sort of shit can happen. If somebody done it, is one of my neighbours burnt their pizza and just frisbeed it into my garden? I mean... There is, I mean, there's a lot of, we've got a lot of time in our hands now, we're all, we're all kind of bored, we're in the house, but never has it crossed my mind that I'm going to shove a pizza in the oven, absolutely frazzle it, and then frisbee it into my, my neighbour's gaff. <laughs> <laughs> That's taking boredom to a whole new level, isn't it? I know, I know, but do you know what, I think, it, seriously, it's, I don't know if it's been my next door neighbour or not, right, but I had to phone the fire brigade for them a few weeks ago, because I, the guy fell asleep and left something in the, in the oven. So I don't know if this is retaliation. I don't know if this is retaliation for me saving the fucker's life. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Ah, eh? oh, Coat Bridge, man. Coat Bridge, what can you say? Anyway, Stevie, what about yourself, mate? What have you been up to? I've been... I've been TikToking with the Waynes and the missies. Oh, aye. I've been doing a lot of that. Nearly broke my toe. Doing that. Seen that, seen that mate, doing that Alex Cha- Oxley chamberlain dance. Aye, the stair... The, what is it? The, the stair shuffle. So I I'm know. like, I, my missus is obsessed with it now. She's, I think she's absolutely had 
as much as she can have in me because she's just constantly on TikTok all the time. Which I'm all right with, you know what I mean? We don't want to, we want to keep things fresh, you know what I mean? Aye, aye, so she's on TikTok all the time, I went to try it. I nearly broke my big toe, that was pretty painful. Uh, played you in at FIFA, again, that was a decider on Friday night, last Friday. Aye, how did that go? How did that go? Well, it was quite embarrassing. It was 8-0 to me. 8-0? 8-0. Eight nine. Jesus Christ, man. The first game he beat me seven four. Well, his boy beat me seven four. The second game, we drew four each in normal time. I beat him four three in extra time, but it was four it was four going on forty four. Right. So then I thought to myself, I, I take pride in how good I am at FIFA. So I thought this guy's due a hiding for me, right? Because he got half lightly last week. So we played it was four 0 the first off, four 0 the second off, and I've not heard then since for him. <laughs> well, I might, I might have a challenger for you at FIFA um, later on in the show, so uh, right. we'll, we'll, wait, we'll wait and see. Uh, Mate, all, all, challenge, all challenges welcome. I'm up for playing that. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. Right? I, I genuinely thought I was brilliant at FIFA. And I, I, any time I come up against them that it's even halfway as decent, I'm fucking terrible at it, man. Is that why your body's well for me all the time? Uh, I'm going to be honest, man. I, I don't think I could live it down. I think if we're going to do it, we need to do it on a grand stage, mate. Right, so here we go, right? We could have a wee old forum, Rangers v Celtic. We could stream it and it could be, we could tie it in with football daft. Mm. But Jank, I'm laying it down to you. I don't, I don't think we should be giving that sort of content away for free, my man. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was going to be free. All right, all right, okay, okay. I need to get out some of my Friday night, then motherfucker better be getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> right, so as we as we speak, as we record this, as we record this, there's a very important bit of voting going on. That is. What you think right. of the old league campaign? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I've tried my best. No, to read up too much on it because this is an opinion piece for me. Mm-hmm. It's no, there's no cut and dried way to do it. There's no, there's no. Unfortunately, people are going to be losing out. Teams are going to be losing out. Teams are going to be gaining stuff that maybe they wouldn't have if the season the season had went on further. It's just I, I don't know, man. I, as a Celtic fan, obviously I want to see Celtic being the champions, but. It, is there, is there a, a I don't it, know. Does it count? Is if it if the season finishes early, and it's in the record books, then it counts. Are you counting it, but? Well, you just count the one that you share with fucking Dumbarton, don't you? So fuck up. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I had, it didn't even take me long to get you gone there, man. I had a whole oh. fucking I had a barrel with a question lined up for you. <laughs> Already, already the veins popping in the heat, man. I know why I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've fucking dived in, man. I can't even believe I've dived in there. Ah, right, okay, sorry. It's a, it's a, it's an emotive subject for me. You, purely because... You, you started seen, off all calm. Ah, you know, you know, you know. I know. Like, fucking cows. <laughs> Listen, you know, it's like walking a fucking razor's edge being on this podcast, mate. You know I, it and I know it. I know, I know. <laughs> but it, 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 I mean, it's just another one that's in the nine that doesn't really count, does it? Oh, the nine doesn't count? Because Rangers, Rangers cheated their way down to the third division. <laughs> Celtic's nine in a row doesn't count. <laughs> Mate, you're far too easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you'd have been a lot harder than this, man. Oh, Jesus man. Christ. You scratch um, the surface a wee bit, producer John, you know what I mean? You scratch I, the surface a wee bit. Listen, you scratch the surface, man, a fiend comes out, mate. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> In all seriousness, though, boys, you know, as a Falkirk supporter on this podcast and supporting the lower leagues, yes. uh, do you think there should be, you know... If the vote's going ahead for the lower leagues today, so we've got to decide whether the campaign finishes today or not. Do you not think that there shouldn't be for me one rule for the Premiership and then one rule for the lower leagues? I know they're waiting on the UEFA thing, but it would it just be across the board. 
again, for Scottish football, how ridiculous would it be so if we say that the leagues concluded for the Championship, League One, League Two today, and then the Premiership go and say, no, no, it's not concluded for us, and then they keep playing. It's just... Here's, here's one as well, though. Nobody knows how long this pandemic thing is going to go on. Nobody yeah. knows. Right? All right, it started to slow down a wee bit in, in some countries, but our country is not fucking paying attention to the instructions. There's people still going to fucking Strathclyde Park and Glasgow Green and hanging it's about ridiculous. together. And it's this is what's causing the hold up in football. And it's, you know, see if people just pay attention, listen to the instructions, <coughs> who's the cold, then we could get to a point where it's safe for them to play these games. Mm-hmm. Right? I, I just, I, what happens then? What happens next season? What if it's still going? It's a domino effect. It's it's not going to be anything soon. I mean, I'm sitting talking to you and my phone's pinging like mad with notifications. 48 more people die with coronavirus in Scotland take the total to 495. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's... And we've still got the worst state to come. And a, then... A, fr- a friend I'm, of mine's dad passed away with it. It's, it's, um, last week, man. It's fucking... It, it's I was watching the news it. last night. On the news last night, down in England, they're saying the police in the past week have had to break up five ho- 500 house parties. I know. Did you I see the tweet? Was... Did you see the tweet? It was uh, Metropolit- Metropolitan Police have attended 600 house parties over this weekend. Somebody retweeted it and said they should be doing police work, not going to fucking parties. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't laugh, you great. But I, I think it should be across the board, producer John. I, I don't think it's fair. The Championship, League One, League Two, it should be. Scottish yeah. football collectively should be coming together trying to get a solution. No, just. But, but everybody's, everybody wants to serve their own plate here, Stevie. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Yeah. And it's, that's what I mean. This is an opinion piece. This isn't a for the greater good piece. See, when it comes down to business, these clubs are going to fight tooth and nail to get the best possible solution for themselves. They don't give a fuck about anybody else. Mm. That's 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 going to be the, the long and short of it, man. So many clubs are going to suffer, but it's a shame. Like, so many lower league clubs, it's going to hit them hard. It's going to hit them really hard. Yeah, well, I mean, I just uh, speak from the perspective of Falkirk, but, you know, this is going to be the second time we've been shafted by something like this, when we, the first time we weren't allowed to go up to the Premiership, even though we can't have the, the Division 1 at the Aye, time. Aye, but John, John, was that not because you said a fucking uh, gazebo <laughs> for a stand? <laughs> That's because we didn't have a 10,000 seater stadium at the time, which was a ridiculous rule in itself. And then we, it had, we asked this ground share with Airdrie and we were rejected, all that sort of stuff. We even applied to, we said we're going to go to Murrayfield and take the games to Murrayfield. Hey, um, Leo. Yeah, that's my man. There, yeah, you can get, well, that's, that's, you you get, get the, the calls in the chat. <laughs> like, go and tell mummy, go on. Ah, Celtic strip you've got on, Will. <laughs> That'll be right. <laughs> right, so, in this week's show, we welcome... Yeah, it's hold on, wait a wee minute, John, we're still talking there. Sorry, John. Hold oh, no, on, that's all right, but I mean... It, you th- the thing is, it's going, to aff- it's going to affect Falkirk. It's going to affect, like, Partick Thistle, for example, are going to come down to, you know, League One. For good- Partick Thistle come down to League One, you know? I mean, not- I know they've been there before, but... And as you say, Chris, everyone, every club you go to will have a different opinion depending on what position they are in the league, you know? Exactly. So it- it's going to be interesting to see how the vote goes, but I think... Our, our chairman's come out and said th- th- he doesn't think it'll go, but I think there's a lot of swing clubs. Like, so, you know, we've got Brian Prunty coming on to the show. Uh, Airdrie, I don't know where their position will be because they're... I think they'll they, need the money. They, 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 do they just take the, the money now so because they need the money? or do they? The one, the one good what? thing about Airdrie is uh, I, I know Airdrie is a club. Um, I've been up there quite a lot. And the infrastructure that they've got in the stadium with regards to other businesses um, within the stadium, mm-hmm. could, should see them all right. I think they, they do quite a lot of functions and stuff. If they're able to get to the point where they're able to hold them again, then the income for that can help them a lot. Um, obviously, it's not as much as a, as a match day Saturday or a match day Wednesday or whatever, but they're lucky that they're, they're in a position where they can do that, whereas you've got clubs like Albion Rovers, that if you've seen Albion Rovers Stadium, mate, it's like... Oh. It's 
you know, there's, there's, they've got nothing, nothing coming in. Um, teams like even going back to like when I used to go to Phil's Park and stuff like that. Teams like East, East Stirling and clubs like that won't won't have anything in place. There's going to be a lot of clubs that go to the wall. Obviously, East Stirling, East Stirling aren't in the league anymore, but there's going to be a lot of clubs that go to the wall. This is where the SFA should be getting into their coffers and bailing clubs out. You know, I, what I mean? would say so. I definitely, definitely, because it's. It's going to be sad, like, well, there's going to be a lot of clubs going to the wall and it's going to be tragic for Scottish football because it's, like you said earlier, you don't know when this is going to end. Exactly. How long is it going to go on for? Exactly. But, uh, have we talked about enough serious stuff now? Can we move Aye. on to the, the daft stuff now? So this week on the show, we welcome Airdrie legend Brian Prunty and on the Legends Lottery, well, we had a nightmare a couple of weeks, so... We'll see where we are with that, Chris. Eh? We'll see where we are. Plus, your chance to win three beer and stepping into a DeLorean as we look at the football decisions decisions you wish VAR had been around to judge. And remember, if you have any random football banter for us, please get on the Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. <laughs> You've been out. You've been out and about this week at all, Stevie. Well, in the house, I've been going out. My wee bit of exercise, and I've been going to the shops, just getting supplies in now and again, picking up odds and ends in and out shops. Well, driving mama, to the shops. I driving. My missus was driving home for work. My missus has still got to work, unfortunately. Right. Right. So she was driving home for work, and somebody on an empty motorway had turned her motor the opposite direction, basically. So it was, like, crashed into the barrier, and it was facing in the opposite direction. And she wow. was the, the... That was the only car on the road. So I don't know how the fuck they've managed that, unless somebody's, like, swerved into them or something and then fucked off. But i tell you something. I know, the, I know the very people that could help this guy. Enlighten me. If you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault, D4 <laughs> claims can make it easy for you. They can make it easy for you. They, they can. can provide you with complete accident management support you require. They'll recover the cost for the at-fault party. Sort it out. They'll sort you out with a like-for-like -like vehicle. So, as Gredo likes to say, if you crash in a Ferrari, you're not getting a fucking Morris Minor <laughs> as its replacement. All right. You're getting a Ferrari back. That's it. A nice, fancy Italian sports car. They'll also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of the approved body shops and return to you. And should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they'll recover the pre-accident value for your car and write you a big, fat check for it. Best of all, it won't cost you a penny as he charges the art fault insurance direct. This guy could have been quids in here if he'd have known about you. Hopefully... Whoever Hopefully you are, you, you, listen, you listen to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you listen. Exactly. Right. G4 claims don't cold call you. They don't buy data. And once you've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. So not a mark on you. Your no claims insurance, your no claims bonus will remain intact and all yeah. that. And the best thing is Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think that they can help. So if you're a chancer, don't bother phoning them. Oh, if you've got please. legit, if you've got a legit claim, then get in contact with Nicole and the girls. So if you've been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, go on to G4 Claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 Grado's favourite aircraft 172. Get them at notatfaultclaim.com and find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims, not at fault claims. Made easy. Boom. Football Dafts, big question. So over the last season, one of the biggest talking points has been VAR. Would you agree, Chris? I would. What does it stand for, Stephen? <laughs> what does it stand for again? <laughs> Video assistant referee. Assistant referee, there we go. Like it or loathe it, it is something that looks likely to be around for a while. But what happened? But what would happen if it had always existed? Huh? Oh, imagine so This it, week, the big question we're asking, if there is one football decision you could have got VAR to review, what would it have been? Right. See, normally I would go for a Celtic one with us, right? Right. 
Right, since I'm feeling, I'm feeling international today. I'm feeling like Mister International today. Is that why you so, wore a Celtic cap? That's why I wore my Celtic away because that's the one that we wear when we're away in other countries. <laughs> Right, so my one this time is Thierry Henry handballing the ball for France against Republic Ireland. Done them out of a World oh, Cup spot. Oh, that was a bad one. That uh, was... He's admitted to it and everything. See that fucking Thierry on me, by the way. No, I can't. Mate, see, I loved him up until that point. But the fact he's just like, ho, 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 ho. Fuck him, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what about yourself? League Cup final this season. League Cup final, you know why I pick one that a punter's not wrote on about? We'll get to them. I'm getting you mine first. I bet that that's there's been a, a guy that's hungry picked that already. Oh. That's why I didn't that's why I didn't go with the Georgia Cadet one. Right. Oh, no, feel free feel free to go with that. It's all the feel free to go with that and you can just say they had such and such as agreed with, with me. Aye, aye, that's a good idea, actually, aye. I would just say the League Cup final because it was so blatantly offside. It was blatant. Aye. It was... And that obviously, was... the overall feeling that day is we were the better team and then the fucking linesman carried his job properly and there's about three East on an offside and the goal stands. It wow. really... I, I, can you give me another decision that's went against Rangers? Another one? Aye. A part three. Apart from the League Cup final, can you give me another Aye. decision? Right, go for it. The goal when we beat these 2-1 at Park Heath, shouldn't it? If we'd VAR, that would nest on, because it hurt, it hurt Edwards on. Mm, fair point. Aye, all right, I see your point now. But Round it's, it's, ama- it's amazing that the only two decisions that have ever went against Rangers happened in the same fucking season. Right, anyway, no. uh, we'll move on. Do you want me to go into me? Oh, I've got myself a big win, I've got myself a big win, there we go, brother. That's a Yiki Javi dick. Right, <laughs> right so uh, we've, got, we've got a few uh, listeners and viewers that have come in with it. The notorious NIV, Italy getting that free kick and cheating us out of the Euros. That's a big one, that's a Aye. big one, Aye, that is a big one. We've got David Ross, Mark Haley's equaliser that stood when it shouldn't in the Scottish Cup semis, 1994. Don't remember that. Oh, no, there is. <laughs> <No idea. laughs> uh, David Mack, Sandy Roy ruling Neil Oliver's late equaliser goal offside for Falkirk in the 1997 Cup final. John. Just Sir John. That is definitely the number one because that killed us. We would have went on to win that. Jesus, man. That brings back bad memories. <laughs> it's like Michael. Nam, it's like Nam. <laughs> <laughs> Michael yeah. King, Airdrie v Dunfermline penalty at Tyne Castle in the Cup semi final, awarded for handball inside the box. VAR confirms it didn't hit Sandinson's horn and it wasn't even in the box. Davy Syme, shame on you. Davy Syme was an abysmal referee, man. Aye. Honestly, oh. so bad. I'll let you take the next one, Chris. Right, the next one is one that it's close to my heart. Uh, if if this could have if this goal had have counted, I'm saying Rangers don't win nine in a row. Yeah, that's what it is, come on. Right. George Cadet takes a ball on his chest, swivels on a sixpence, <laughs> volleys it right into the top corner at the the fucking was it the Broom Lone end or the fucking Copeland Road end, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it was the Broomy end. Right, and he's fucking volleyed it right and he's did it there fucking, oh, yeah, boy, yeah, yes. <laughs> offside. A mile offside, man. Aye, not only would, not only would VAR have turned that over, that Wiseman would have got his eyebrow season ticket taken off him. <laughs> and, fuck, honestly, it's just, <laughs> That that's the one that sticks out in my head the most. That and John Hartson's in the League Cup final. Um, well, so, any more? Any more? Celtic? Any more decisions against Celtic against Rangers? No, I, any I, more? Don't, I don't. I don't dwell on them, Stephen. Right, uh, so, <laughs> hang me. We'll you all right? You see my bar upset, there, mate. I'm I'm absolutely fine, bro. Don't try and get me again. Listen, I've learned my lesson. All right, I've right. learned my lesson. 
Dougie Brownlee, 1976 Scottish Cup semi final. Motherwell 2 0 up, and Derek Johnson goes down in a different postcode to the Motherwell goalie, and the ref gave the penalty. I like that, because he's in a different postcode. Oh, Christ I'll let you take this one as well, Chris. Yeah, League Cup final last season. Three Celtic players marginally offside. <laughs> No, the no, no, doesn't no. See it. Alex, Alex didn't see him. Mr. Julian goes to the back It's a goal for Sepin! Yes, your dancer, the first drop, the first silver wheel of the season goes to Parkhead. That's 11 trophies in a row. Can you believe it, Stephen? Can you believe it? Producer John. Yes. I won't be in next week. <laughs> <laughs> you say that every week, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Kieran, Kieran Hamilton, League Cup final 2019. Make Morelos retake the penalty so we can laugh at him again. Ah, Kieran, your part will shape, mate. I know. John, why are you laughing so much? I thought I was quite funny, no? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, that was you who wrote that in. <laughs> Under a false name, wasn't it? <laughs> Nah, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why we said that for VAR. There was not a thing wrong with that penalty. Thank you, Chris. Um, Apart from the way you took it after it. Aye. <laughs> right. So, um, is there any other ones that you can think? I'm of? trying to think. I mean, what about the '66 World Cup final? <laughs> aye. Lampard's goal a... for uh, England against Germany. Aye, that was that was over the line by about the length of me. What about the uh, one Roy Carroll? Was it Spurs? Sco- someone scored for the halfway line. It was Pedro it. Mendes. Pedro Mendes Aye. scored against Roy Carroll again, and it was a mile over the line. Mate, it was again. That was that was maybe even worse than the Lampard one. What about when Liverpool played Chelsea in the Champions League semi final? Remember? Aye. Was it Gallas? Or or, uh, no, Javi Garcia. Aye, but Gallas tried to clear it, didn't he? And I don't think it was the other line. It wasn't over the line, and they no, gave the goal. They gave the goal, didn't they? No. Stuff it like was... that, man. And it finished that game. Finished that. That finished that game, didn't it? One no. I, I Liverpool. Liverpool went through on away goals or something. I, like that. that was the year they won it, wasn't it? Aye. And um, that I see that whole season. That whole season, it was the luck was just in, in that tournament, aye, wasn't it, man? Aye. Definitely, man. Definitely. But I still say the League Cup final this season is the most shocking one I've seen. But anyway, moving on. On Football Daft, we have made it our mission to find out where the cult heroes are now on our Legends Lottery. I mean, we've had a mare the last couple of weeks, haven't we, Chrissy boy? Oh, we've had a fucking absolute nightmare, Stevie. It's been a disaster. Absolute disaster. But this week we were tasked by John, the producer, to see if at least one is to get a cult hero for any team. So, I'm going to see I failed again. Seriously? Aye, I've no... Oh, mate. I'm going to put it down to homeschooling again. I've just been busy. I've been busy. Right, okay. You I've had any, two, any player in Scottish football to get on, Stephen Burden, and you I, didn't get on. No, right. See, next week, right, I'll tell you what. I had, I had one lined up last night, but he bailed at the 11th hour because he had calls to make today to players. Do you want to know who it was? Who was it? Do you want to know, producer John? Yeah, go on. Lee McCulloch. Oh, oh but he, he, he's, he's a main guest, isn't he? He's a I main know. guest. That's how desperate I go. I went for a, I went for a big name for the Legends Lottery, but I, I say to him, look, mate, I had Fergie on, I had Love and Cranz on. But then I thought, he's going to think he's coming on as a guest, but I thought, you're only going to be on for like two minutes or something. But because he's got Zoom calls to make to the Dundee United boys and all that today, he's like, I'm busy, busy. So, But he's up for coming on, and I think we should get him on as a main guest. What about you, Chris? I would, I would, I had like uh, Lee McCulloch on as a main guest. I think. I'd I'd, how did you go on in the Legends Lottery? How did I go on in the Legends Lottery? Well, let me tell you. Let You've me got tell you. Ain't he's waiting for. He's waiting look, to come on, at, Chris. Look at my wee face. Look at my wee face. You want, do you want to bring him oh, on, Chris? He's waiting for you there. There's no, there's no many people that have scored more legendary goals than the goal that this guy scored at Celtic Park. Against Barcelona, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Mr. Tony Watt. He's connected to audio. What, what is happening, Tony? You good, right, mate? Lads. How you doing, mate? What's happening, boys? 
Oh, uh, not much, not much, mate. How you, how you surviving? I all right. Not too bad. I've been sound. I'm just stuck on the PlayStation. I was just a I, on the PlayStation, avoiding me, mate. All right, you're getting slapped up soon. You know that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What's been happening? No much, mate. No much. Same as you. FIFA doing my nut. Homeschooling the veins. FIFA homeschooling the lot, mate. No, I mean living the dream. That's Aye. my normal life was just going to train and come back playing FIFA anyway, so I just wake up a wee bit later and it's just getting back to normal now. That's it, man. That's it. He's me. Well, uh, Tony, last time I seen you, mate, it was in, I, I think we were in the mint. I, I seen you, you were, it was the day before you were getting married. How did aye, how aye. did the wedding all go and stuff like that, mate? Sound me, I smooth. I had to, I was going over to Bulgaria a couple of days later, so it just went smooth, had the next day to chill, and then I was over back into football. Oh. I'm balancing that. The mint, that's a bit of an institution in Coat Bridge, and that's a restaurant, isn't it? The mint. Aye. Aye. It's famous in Coat Bridge. I've been there, it's <laughs> nice, man. It's I nice. I think one of the only things that's good to come out of Coat Bridge, isn't it? Apart, Christ from Christ me, Christ. apart from me and you, mate. Apart from me and you. Correct. It's number three. You're first, I'm second. <laughs> hey, I only, hey. only an order of buff, mate. Only an order of buff. Hey, Lenny Murdoch's the Coat Bridge. Big Frank Gallagher. That's Ricky true, Burns as well. Oh, aye, Ricky. Peter, Peter Grant. Johnny Russell. Aye. Uh, Peter Houston. He's a coat bridge man. <laughs> there you go. That's it. I think we all went to the same school and all, Tony. Aye, correct. St. Pat's. St. Pat's get knocked down. I know. It's like, it's like building eyebrows on the, on the site of Parkhead. Honestly. Aye. Just never be good enough for it. <laughs> never again, mate. Never again. So anyway, <laughs> what's happening with this FIFA? When, when am I scalping your arse at FIFA then? I'm still pennies any time. I'm always available. Right, don't don't give out your username on this, right? Enough, I'll, I'll get it off you on text, all right? I'll be on the night. I'll be playing pro clubs with the boys, but I've got a wee hour before it, man. If any of want a fucking lesson, I'm there, man. Do you really I'm... want to go into a pro clubs game no. off the back of getting your arse scalped? I'd happily... I... Tonight, maybe a bit close, so we'll maybe do tomorrow my Mrs. Wee Sister's birthday party in quarantine, so we'll get that. But if you want a challenge, I'll challenge your pro clubs team as well with the vision, yeah? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Mate, right, this is the thing. We started, remember I texted you last week, that's the first time me and the boys have all done pro clubs. Aye. There's a few behind the scenes unresting, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we, started well, I off, we started off no bad. Got promoted, then we get relegated right away. Well, I'm having a bit of a problem, and I sacrificed myself for the team, and I made my wee guy centre back. Oh. So I control, I control any. So, so they are. A bit of at the back, but nobody appreciates you. No. All these greedy beeps at the front, just trying, <laughs> trying score, trying get the goals, and don't pass to you, and then Aye. they start shouting at me whenever we concede. That's not odd. <laughs> no, <laughs> man. It's I a fantastic. I played it with all the wrestlers, pro clubs or the ICW wrestlers back in the day, right? And honest to God, I was a scapegoat, man. Anytime anything went wrong, it got blamed on me. I was a right winger. What am I meant to do? Do you know what I mean? How am I meant to stop goals? No service. If there's no service, a right winger, you're gone. Uh, it's the strikers are the problem, mate. You should, you should know that. The strikers exactly. are the problem. We've got big debt when Gallagher. He plays up front. and we've got, Do you know CJ Novo, the YouTuber? Rangers YouTuber. Aye, aye, aye. He plays with so he videos it and we slot a deck all the time for being greedy and then you can go back and watch his videos and you can see he's greedy and big deck just acts as if nothing's happened as if look I, I get the ball all the time so I must be doing something right he does nothing with <laughs> it and it's, it's starting to annoy me to be fair See we were playing the other night and then my mates the same he plays he plays out in the wing right wing my big mate Paul and we're playing and then his wee guy is literally off the pitch just stoning not even moving <laughs> and we're like, ah, what are you doing? And all I can hear is I'm sitting pulling my pint. Ah, mate, get it together, man, come on. Right, people are saying things like, oh, I was just giving my dog attention or texting somebody. We'll do that before or after the game. Exactly, exactly. Game, you take your FIFA serious, lads, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, hey, mate, yeah. So, Tony, how's life yeah. at Motherwell, mate? Good, mate, aye. It's been, the Bulgaria thing was all right. It was good, good contract, good place, and... I went over and they were saying things to me like you'll you'll be waiting a year and then you'll play and I'm just thinking for the money. No, I am not waiting and I just thought I'd chance it and I came back and within a few days they phoned me and thinking phone up please here, like the third best team in the league are phoning you and since day one the gaffer's pulled me in, just 
tell me what he wants and he's been honest and he didn't really get that over there. So it's kind of refreshing that he'll be transparent with you, whereas over there it's like more distance, play games with you, whereas this manager just says, if you don't do this, you won't play. If you do it, you've got a good chance of playing and that's good enough for me. That's good, man. Right, good, good club for them, man. They're in a good place, my aren't they? They're looking a good Aye. outfit. It's a place you don't want, like, if Rangers are going away, you don't want to go to Mullet. It's a tough place to go, man. And they're a great right good outfit, isn't it? He's got, that's what surprised me. After, he told me an after, like, maybe a day or two, and said, like, we want to offer you. And I had already made my mind up, not because of the position they were, but the way they coached, the way they wanted to be played. It's not like, I've been at teams where, not that you wing it, but you try and nullify the off teams and you try and sit back. He just wants you to go and he's always got a game plan. He always wants you to positively do your thing instead of, instead of just see what the way a lot of teams go to the old firm and just sit back. Well, he doesn't want that. But sometimes because of the quality of the old firm, you've got to sit back and you've got to look as if you're sitting behind the ball. But he wants you to get in their face and it's, it's quite refreshing. That comes a close when you do. I mean, a few games in Motherwell, man. You, it's, it's a tough game, man. It's a hard right. hard game. I can imagine a lot of the players, like Rangers players, know they've been in a game. I mean, it's a tough, tough, tough team, man. Ah, he's tried to mix the ball for them. There is, those boys will put themselves about. You see, it's two centre half, so getting a fight. Alan Campbell, Donnelly, they're all ready, but you've also got, they've all got quality. It's not as if they're just one or the other, where maybe our teams have maybe got some players who are workmen and some players who are more technical. There's a lot of boys that could probably go a step up because they've got the both. Aye. So tell me about this, Tony. Uh, you, when you made your debut for Celtic, you came on against Motherwell. You scored two goals. Right. Um, I was I was in holiday. I was in my wee cousin's stag do in a bar in Ibiza, Aye. and I nearly I nearly get battered because there was that many Rangers fans and Motherwell fans watching the game. <laughs> so it was. If you still get that jersey with the with the uh, the the Asian writing on the back, yeah. I, there was two. I gave one to my sister. She was going through a, a tough time at the time. I think it was something to do with her pregnancy. So I gave her that, and then one got sent to Thailand for the Thai Tims. But it was weird because I know I don't believe in things. I believe in some things are meant to be, but I used to go to the Marvel games before I was uh, allowed to go to Celtic games. But I was always a Celtic fan, but. My uncle was from the hill and I'd go to all. So the first Celtic game I went to was as a Marvel fan in the Marvel end. You know what I mean? Obviously, I was supporting Celtic, but my uncle used to take me on a Saturday and it was just weird. Everything fell into place. Everything kind of aligned and it was the first part where I scored my first goal. It was, it Did just, you run over to your uncle and get that one? <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, I used to like him, but now I'm a Celtic fan. Now I'm back to a Marvel fan. <laughs> no man, that was a genuinely that was a great memory for me. Obviously, your your goal against Barcelona is the one everybody talks about. But um, because obviously I went to school with Alana and um, I'm friendly with, with Gordon's brother as well. Uh, with, with sorry, with Andrew's brother Gordon. So mm-hmm. seeing you coming off the bench, I was buzzing for them as well, mate. Do you know what I mean? It was. I well, it was Alana who I gave it to. It was. I, she sometimes on her Facebook will actually post a picture in the old. I think it's got tenants on it. It was a tenants one, wasn't it? Aye. It'll be that she's wearing. Aye, it was so, hungry. That, what, by the way, that's a, that's a great gift to get you somebody, mate, especially with it being your first jersey. I, I, I always wanted my name in the back of the top. That was all I ever wanted. Like, it was just to put it up on the wall and it just obviously I, I knew I would get it again. So I just, I gave her that and then I think I gave away my first couple and then I came on the old firm the next week. I gave that away to my uncle, actually, Used to take me to the Marvel games. I came on for like 30 seconds. Honestly, it must have been. I didn't get a touch to the ball, but I remember. It was buzzing to be on the pitch. I just cut a circle round in the middle of the pitch thinking, wow, this is path. And then <laughs> that was just what I wanted. The name in the back, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't wish for more. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was Aye. never going to play every week. I say that every time people are like, waste of talent, this, that. I was never going to play every week. Look at Marella, the standard at Rangers. Look at Edward. I'm a good player, I know I'm good, I back myself, but these are players who are, to play every week at Celtic, you need to be better than Celtic level, you need to be, to play every week at Rangers, you need to be better, because if you're an average Rangers player up front, or Celtic, you're going on the bench, you need to be ready for that next step. And I'd, mate, I don't know, I think you're selling yourself short there, I'm not trying to butter you no, up for it's, all, like that, but it's honest, it's honest, just in terms of everything, 
I probably believed I could have stayed there and maybe played 20 games a season, 25. But when it came to 45 games a season, scoring 30 goals at that, it would have been hard. And these players are. So I, I, I don't have any regrets about it. I don't not try to stay away and like say, oh, I was just buzzing my name in the back of the top. What I'd done was more than enough for me. I grew up supporting Celtic. Like I said, I wasn't allowed to go to the games because my mum and dad used to always think, oh, Celtic Rangers violence, you can't, you can't go. It is what it is. It's not really that bad, do you know what I mean? But my mum and that were just cautious about it. And I just thought, getting that top with a name in the back, everything just, even, I played like 30 games. I was buzzing with that, do you know what I mean? Played in Europe for them. I think playing, playing one game for your schoolboy heroes, man, is, a, is, a, is an achievement in itself. But it's Many boys in our school would have went on to do it. John Hale. Left the dream, mate. Left the dream. That's what I mean. It's, it's mad. It's... I don't regret it. And when I Again. talk with Marvel, people are like, you're a waste of time. Marvel was a brilliant club. My dad always said nice. to me, if you played with Falk or Carriardry, I'd have been happy for the rest of your career. Marvel was a great club, so Aye. I had a good career out of it. I'm 26. I've, I've still got a few club. years left in you, my man. You know I mean, I, I feel what St. Johnston was meant to be the... And it has, I had a, not a bad injury, but an injury I couldn't really get over. And then St. Johnston was meant to be the time where I was building back up and going and going and going and it was I was wanting to stay for a bit didn't quite work out got an amazing offer from Bulgaria I went over and I still think I'm on the upward curve I still think I'm progressing I'm not at my peak but I believe within the next 18 months I will be back where I will be because it's, it's, it doesn't come overnight I need I need in what I've done at St Johnson I need to learn during games I've learned through training for the last four or five years but you need to learn when you're in the, the fire pit do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right, so getting back to your goal against Barcelona, let me tell you the story about how I witnessed it, right? <laughs> so, um, as, you, as you know yourself, Celtic Park, you've got the, you've got the big holdings during the Champions League games, right? It, see the big advertising boards yeah. that they run the, run the ground, right? So, the first five or six rows need to stand up, basically, to see the pitch, right? So, I'm ten rows behind, and every bastard in front of me stood up, right? Mm-hmm. So I can't see a fucking thing, and because it's the Champions League and it's licensed, they can't show it in the big screens either, right? right. So I'm like, I can't see a fucking thing here, right? So I was like, fuck Should it, I, I went up. For the I, I, mate, I stood up at the top of the stairs, right? And the security guard tried to fucking tell me to go back to my seat. I says, listen, you, you fucker. I say, see if you want me to go back to my seat, you need to get every single prick in front of me sitting fucking down, and just is <laughs> out. Just as that word came out my mouth, you went through and banged it in and me and the security guard were like, ah, <laughs> celebrating like fuck, you know what I mean? But honestly, man, it was, that, was, that was crazy, that was crazy. What, a, mate, mate, fucking hell. No, I mean, the players at Barcelona had in that team and you're fucking running away from them and smashing that in. What a feeling that must have been. The last few days I've sat and watched like videos of Xavi, see what somebody tweets at La Liga or Messi, so I'm going and you're thinking, Look at these guys, man. Xavi, I watched that highlight. You see the way he passed the ball? He could put it anywhere. Aye, but what? He also was the one that made the mistake for you to be able to run through on goal. That's what I'm saying about the fate with my debut and that. Like, I don't believe in things. I do believe everything happens for a reason, but I don't believe it to be too much. But then, it, with that happening, like, it's the Marvel thing. To score my debut at Marvel when I used to go to Marvel and then for the best player in the world. Or one of the best players in the world to make a mistake. It's just, I, I believe if you do good, bad won't follow. And I, I do believe I've been all right in my life. I do believe I'm not a bad person. So I, I think you get not rewarded, but I don't think you get punished. And Aye. just stuff doesn't add up and it adds up my good way. And for some reason, I think these things are meant to be not, not spiritual. I don't believe in all that, but I just think somebody's up there looking out for me. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. There's a great Scottish saying, if it's meant for you, will no go by you. Exactly. So obviously, that ball wasn't meant for Xavi because it went fucking by. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I've been 10 times out of 10 in training, I'd have put that by the post. <laughs> <laughs> what do you um, think for the rest of the season? What's your views on the, the rest of the fixtures, Nora? Personally, I'd like them to get played out. Not, I do think it's difficult. Because money, health, everything really. But personally, what I think would happen, I spoke to like just friends and stuff about it. 
I like more teams in the league just because up here, a lot of boys I've spoken to have moved to England say they go down to England because they want a fresh chance because they don't want to be going in. No disrespect to teams two or three times a season, mm-hmm. playing them twice at home. You could end up playing the same team five times. I would have 20 teams, but the only thing wrong about that is a lot of teams financially, the gap would be bigger in quality probably between your 20th place and first place. I would play the season out from August to October or whatever it's going to be. I'd start a summer league for the fact that Aye. in February, how many games get called off there because the wind and the rain messing up the pitches. But the pitches started in February. With the wind and the rain, you'd probably get them played. The pitches would be better in the summer. You'd have chances for kids to go to the game when they're staying up late because they've got school holidays with a good weather. You could play evening games in the summer because it doesn't get as dark. You know that the Rangers would be more prepared for Europe. Also, same other one, Aberdeen get Europe this year. Not, Not sure. many times do the third and fourth places qualify for Europe. They always go out in the last leg or the second last leg, but they mm-hmm. get fully into a season. I'd be a couple of weeks off in the season, but that's just fantasies for me. I'm not against anything. See if they keep this the way it is, then that's fine. But I just do think there's a lot of positives for moving into that. I think you're absolutely right there, mate. See what you, the point that I would make is see the Europe thing. The Europe thing. We 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 tend to come up against teams in the qualifiers that are maybe six and seven weeks into their season, or, season or even five. even longer than that. So their fitness levels are higher. Their their mm. team cohesion's a lot better. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a good point. I would move to Scott to summer football. I agree with you. And I suggested this when I seen this statement. We were talking at dinner. And my missus dad was like, I know, but you don't need a six week break right after it. And I was saying. Personally, I don't need a six-week pre-season. I'd take a two-week pre-season and get into games, but I wouldn't go straight in because it's not fair on people watching if I'm not sharp. If they were Aye. watching a pre-season game, and not because I was, I'd, I'd go and train, I'd go and play games Saturday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday. Do you know what I mean? Every three days, because every two days you're not going to be peak. But I think you do need a little bit of sharpness in you because it would just be like a pre-season game after 70 minutes Aye. everybody would blow up you know what it's like if, if you go out and run something you feel alright but if you go and play fives it's a different feeling Aye. in the leg it's a different and I just believe that I would play the rest of the season now until the end of the year and then I'd do a summer league but it just depends I'm, I'm hearing all the positives from my side also you could give kids 100 tickets 200 k- tickets to the teams outside the top two and fill the stadium, you could give them, because they're not going to be sold anyway, once or twice, like, but, you'd need to hear the negatives, before you weigh it up, it's like anything, like, I understand why Rangers, Aberdeen and Hearts, <coughs> will oppose us today, and probably also St Mern, because if it's a point per game, eh, not St Mern, Hibs, because if it's a point per game, Hibs are going to end up seventh, and, you understand it, because if I was a Rangers fan, I would oppose it, if I was a Celtic fan, I would say finish uh, finish the games or give the league. It's just whatever your team. Mm-hmm. Your I, team. I personally, I personally want the games to be played. But I, well, I seen yesterday. See the Bundesliga. Would you be happy with to make it safe if you could get all the games streamed, no fans until twenty twenty one, but the league starts back, or would you want to wait and? Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's hard. It's not that, Tony. It's the it's the health and safety of the actual players, mate, as but well. That's why they're saying twenty twenty one. They're saying maybe wait till like next month to play it. Make sure everyone's COVID free, and then to make sure even more. Would you take that to get the football back, or would you rather wait till September October? I don't know, man. Without behind closed doors, man. Again, I'll, it's kind of touching on, like, it's a pre-season feel about it, the atmosphere. I think you need I the know. fans there, man. You need the fans. I know, I know but I'll be honest with you. I'm would... just asking. Aye. There's I'd, so many. I know. Same with this summer league thing. There's so many pros and cons, but you only see the pros. Aye. Aye. Oh, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I would watch fucking 22... Five-year-olds running about a fucking back garden and now I'm missing football that much. Aye, I know. <coughs> but I think <clears throat> behind closed doors, Disney sit right with me, man. I don't know. It's just... um, it, it, it would be hard. Like, you know, being a Rangers fan yourself, see going to Ibrox, if it's 
it's good for players. See, it's thirty minutes in and just nil nil. It's good for the opposition team because you hear them getting restless. Or if Aye. Rangers go one two nil up after ten minutes, it's the best Aye. place in the world for you to go. Do you know what I mean? And Aye. the crowd can sway a game. They can really bring you on. And if you're yes. playing against a team, whatever way it's going, and you hear them, some players start getting nervous and start not yes. all going back the way scared. So it would probably be. It would be a big, big shake-up, wouldn't it? It would be. It definitely would be. I don't think there's any easy answer to it. Whoever needs to get the decision sorted, good luck, man, because it's it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. Well, listen, yeah. lads, we're going to we're going to need to wrap this up here now. Um, we've got we've got Brian Prunty coming on in a minute, so you're getting you're getting replaced, Tony. Replaced and replaced by Prunts. Oh, we could have got him in on this and all right enough. I know. Um, but hang me, Tony, thanks a lot, mate. Yeah, you've done me a big favour today coming on the show. Really appreciate no, it. Thanks for having me. Next time I cross paths with you, there's a beer on. Beer with your name on it, mate. No, right. I appreciate it. Cheers, no, Tony, mate. Cheers, Just bud. Me, Cheers, mate. Cheers, See you later, later on, man. See you. Cheers. Tony, what, mate? It's all right, eh? Done well, mate. Good guy, good guy. Brand new, so... Pressure's on me, innit, to get some done. Pressure's on you. Well. Legends lottery next week, mate. You've got to... You've got to... Uh, you've got to up it, mate. You've got to up your game. I can't have Lee McCulloch on the Legends lottery. He's too big a name. <laughs> That's just belittling Tony Watt there, mate. Oh, I don't mean that. Many, how many, how many fucking goals has Lee McCulloch scored against Barcelona? <laughs> I don't mean that. I didn't mean that. That came out all right. <laughs> It's now time for our Beer 52 teaser. For your chance to win a case of beer, all you have to do is answer the question we put to you. Last week, we asked you to name six players from Scotland who have scored hat-tricks in the English Premiership. Can you name four of them? That's mental, isn't it? Right, John Hendry, Gordon Stratton, Gary McAllister, Kevin Gallagher, Duncan Ferguson and Stephen Naismith. Huh? No is, bad. Jordan, is Jordan Rhodes never scored a top-flight hat-trick? No, not in the Premiership, no. No Premier, I don't, no, he wouldn't have in the Premier, would he? Ah, uh, he's not really played much in the Premier nah. League, actually. But congratulations to St Johnston supporter Rick Dargate, who nailed it. And this week, here's your teaser. Who is the only player to have scored a hat-trick in all the English top-flight leagues, the League Cup, the FA Cup, and for his country? I know, I know who it is. Right. I'm going to rethink about that. I'll give, you, I'll give you a hint. The, go- the hat trick he scored for his country was against Scotland. Yeah, I'm going to think about that. Right. You can enter by commenting on the link on the Football Daft Facebook page or tweet your score to at Football Daft. Winners must be 18 or over and stay in the UK. And you can get free beer from Beer52 as well. It's a monthly subscription service for beer, which they source from some of the greatest small batch breweries around the world. They theme cases every month with previous themes, including Germany, South Africa, Korea, New Zealand, and more. And all you need to do is go to beer52.com slash daft, and we can sort out free beers if you cover just £4.95 for the postage. You normally get eight, but as you're a football daft listener, we will give you two extra free beers. So that's a total of 10 free beers. So just go to beer52.com slash daft. That's the word beer and the numbers five and two dot com to get your first case of 10 beers for free. Let's welcome to Football Daft, a man who started his career at Celtic before moving on to the likes of Aberdeen, Inverness Cali, Ayr, Alloa and Dumbarton. With over 100 appearances for the Diamonds, he's a bit of a legend down Airdrie way. It's Brian Prunty. Hey, what's happening, Brian? Hi, guys. What how are we doing? <laughs> All right, mate. Hey, that All was right. a lot of teams, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I thought we were going to run out of time there. I know. <laughs> That's added an extra Brilliant. 40 seconds with the podcast there. Exactly, exactly. So, Brian, how's, how's tricks, mate? How's, how's life been treating you? Yeah, things have been fine. It's obviously a diff- difficult situation for everybody that we're in just now, but there's no point in mumping and moaning about things. We've, we've all got to get on as, as best we can. 
albeit That's very, it. very difficult, but everybody's in the same boat, you know, but the one thing's for sure, we will get, we will get through this, we will get no, through, but just nobody knows when. Definitely. Like somebody, somebody made a statement to me, uh, every day that you wake up is a day closer to it being back to normal. So it's it's quite a nice thing to think of it that way. You know what I mean? That's a good, that's a good way to put it. We're trying to put positive spin on as, exactly. as much as we can because it's so difficult. Well, you should know how to put positive spin on stuff. You've played for Airdrie most of your career. I can't comment because <laughs> <laughs> Hey, remember, remember next time you're up at that stadium, just you be careful, boy. Aye, I know, mate, I know. Listen, I'd, I've, I'll need to watch myself because I've had a few digs at Airdrie on this and I don't think it's going to work out well for me when I'm back at the old Penny Cabs Arena. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, that's where I like playing my football, man. I like playing that. That's because you like picking wee black balls out your shoes for 150 weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> Clogging up the machine. <laughs> so, Brian... Aye, so, you started your career out at Celtic. Yes. Who did you come up with? Who came through the ranks with you at Celtic? Um, I had five. I had five years full time at Celtic, and ahead ahead of me there was the likes of Larson, Sutton, Hartson, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I could name drop forever here, but um, the guys that kind of progressed in, from my time was the likes of Sean Maloney. Aye. Right. Um, and a Simon good Lynch and all with, those boys. Big, uh, big John Kennedy, obviously assistant manager, still a good good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, the likes of the guys, David Marshall. There's a few like God rest his soul, Liam Miller, Jamie Aye. Smith. There's a few a few of the guys came through and obviously kicked on and got a few games. Yeah, but very very difficult time to beat Celtic at that time because of the players and obviously had a manager in place uh, under Aye. a where he was very stringent in what he wanted. If you weren't seven foot four. Apart from Larson, then you had no chance. <laughs> so, you know me, me and Toad had done all right there then. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was, I was happy just sitting in the stands at that point in time. What a side that was, Brian. What a, what was, a Celtic side that was. Yeah, they, 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 they knew what the, the cause was for. They, they were the manager, the manager was on their case all the time. Right. So, they knew that they had to produce because at that time, obviously, Celtic had spent a few quid as well on the likes of. Suttons and, and Hartsons and stuff, you know. So they had to produce, but they had a the manager there who was determined to do well, and obviously everything they'd done speaks for itself. Well, that was pretty much unprecedented times at Celtic, you know. Celtic had money to burn at that point, you know. We were spending six and five and six million on players and stuff like that. Um, it was it would have been a lot harder for you to get, get into the first team at that time. Um, so, what what uh, facilitated your first move away from Celtic? Uh, Chris, when, not long before I left Celtic, I um, I was playing a good reserve team, right? And the reserve team can mean this and that to anybody, right? But at the end of the day, it's non-competitive, right? right. So, I had scored, before, before I left Celtic, I had scored 22 goals in 16 games. So, Oof. I thought that merited me, I'm not saying playing, but it merited me maybe being in a squad or two. Aye. Now, when that didn't happen, ultimately you think, well, do you know what? You have to move on. You have to move on. You're not going to get a chance. And then uh, I had Aberdeen on the phone. And for me to go from there to Aberdeen, which is still a big club, um, I thought, do you know what? It's a chance that you might never get again. So I had to take it. Do you work with Jimmy? Was it Jimmy Calderwood that was there at the time? Uh, no, Steve Patterson. Steve Patterson. Steve Patterson, oh, aye. Pelly. Pelly. Pelly boy. <laughs> what was it like there? Stephen, I went I went there at a difficult time. Mm-hmm. I went there at a difficult time. I went there Partick Thistle were bottom of the league at the time. Mm-hmm. And I went there because I wanted to play first team football, of course, and it was a no brainer in the end. But the likes of me going from a club like Celtic to Aberdeen, where I'd scored all the goals in the in the reserves, shall we say? Aye. Big things were expected of you. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, I probably wasn't ready for it. Aye, because aye. Out the fire into the frying pan. Well, that's it. That's the thing. Aberdeen's a, a one team city. Um, yes. Everybody that lives there is an Aberdeen fan. Yes. Um, and you you probably can't walk the streets, I would think, if you're an that's Aberdeen right. player. Right. Because when things weren't going well, and by the way, see if it wasn't for Partick Thistle that year, Aberdeen were going down. Aye. So, yeah, I would go for the shopping, I would go down the street and stuff, and people would, would have a look and, yeah, you would get your comments. 
you'll get your right. comments, you know, and people would say things that, that can be hurtful. But you know what? Born and bred in Airdrie. <laughs> takes more than that to put you down, you know? <laughs> That's it, mate. That's it. You know what I mean? Yeah, people, people, don't even, people don't even know who you are in Airdrie and you walk the streets and they shout stuff at you. So it, 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 stands, you in, it stands you in good stead. You know what I mean, mate? As long, uh, but, as long, as, you, as, long as you don't say, wipe your feet on the way out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Aye, there's only two good things that come out of Airdrie, you and the road out here. Right, so anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so what happened after that then? You moved on for Aberdeen. Um, you've you've obviously, you've, you've had a great career. You're, you're a player that, that people know. You know what I mean? See if you mention Brian Prunty, people know who Brian Prunty is. Um, so you moved on for Aberdeen. Um, and what? Uh, how did you? How did you start? Did you start to enjoy your football more? I went across. I went across to Inverness. Now Inverness mm-hmm. had come up, obviously, from the Helen League right up through the bottom leagues, right up to the top, and they took a wee chance on me. And I had a, I had a good year at Inverness, believe it or not, a very good year in their first year in the Premier League. They stayed up that year, which is a result in itself. Aye. You know, and I played a small part in that. Um, and then ultimately, I didn't play a great deal, to be fair. No. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to, I've had my wee spell in the Premier League. It hasn't quite worked out and I'll be the first to hold my hands up to that. Mm-hmm. And then I got a phone call from Airdy. Um And then to be fair, pff, that's when I really started to come out and one when I come, come back to my hometown team. Things mm-hmm. really started to, to take off then, yeah. Aye. So you've, over the, over your period where you've played, played loads of times where you found yourself back at them as a coach now. Um, it's, do you feel as if have you got any sort of ambitions towards the managerial side of things now um, after your, your move from East Kilbride over back over to Airdrie Airdrie have been great with me give me, give me the job as well because um, just, just, just what is it, about a year and a half ago almost two years I qualified as a sports therapist as well so Airdrie, right. Airdrie took me on board to, to do that side of things as well and Honestly, it's been absolutely brilliant, and I'm getting to sit on a, a bench every week. It keeps me involved with football, and I'm getting my own clients and stuff as well be, at, at the stadium and stuff. And it's been absolutely brilliant. And I can't speak highly enough. Over the years, I mean, altogether, I've been at Airdrie, I think it's six years, six years plus. They've been great for me, but also I like to think I've I've done not too bad for them as well. Aye, absolutely. I mean, you're you're an Airdrie legend, mate. Anybody that's an Airdrie fan will have a special place in their heart for you. So um, I, don't, I don't think you need to worry about that. Definitely. Can we talk about your, yeah, was it for Dumbarton, your overhead kick goal against Livingston, Brian? No, wait a minute, That's wait a minute, Stevie. Go. Hold on, hold on a minute. I need to talk about that, right? <laughs> now, Brian, Brian, me and you have been pals on Facebook for a couple of years now. Yes. Right? It's probably bi-weekly that you post that goal on it. Maybe every fortnight. <laughs> See, the thing I'll is... tell you what, it's the best shin roller I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> Was it better than Rooney's? Aye, aye, aye. So. aye, his actually hot his shin. Yours was a fucking tight connection right to the top. See, the thing oh, is, mine could have went anywhere as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, we're, now we're in isolation. How many times have you watched it? I'm being serious, Stevie. It's on Facebook every other week. Uh, aye. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's somebody sitting in one of these pages, right? It's sharing all the time. And somehow I keep getting the brunt of it. Okay, but I'm not going to complain. <laughs> How many times have I dug you up for it, Brian? Listen, I'm not wanting to blow my own trumpet, right? But there's a quarter million hits there, so long may it continue. <laughs> well, <there you> go. <laughs> not, that, not that I'm counting. Well, a quarter, Is it the quarter best million. Goal of your I think it's got to. I think. Right. I think. No disrespect, but I think obviously the level I played that and to to create something like that. I mean, let let's be serious. That if that was if that was one of the top guys. I'd be, I'd be everywhere. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing. I heard that in the European Cup final, uh, Gareth Bale took his Real Madrid tap off and he had a Brian Prunty shirt on underneath it. <laughs> He's in big enough trouble, never mind with me under his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, um, Brian, you've been, in, you've been in lots of dressing rooms early years, yes. played for different clubs. What's the best feeling you've had, the best dressing room you've been in? What's the best? The, be- the best feeling I've had, the best feeling I have. Is, um, I have to admit, just bef- just before retiring, um, I won, I won the, I got my first medal with our broth, right, and that probably meant the most to me, right, because I'd sacrificed so much since I was sixteen, 
mm-hmm. to to be the best I could. And there was a lot of a lot of negatives, so there's a lot of downturns as well, right? So for me to get a medal around my neck when I played with Arbroath was probably, I know it sounds thing to a lot of folk, but what I've been through as well, you know, in terms of getting released, getting released, getting released, getting released. So many times you pick yourself back up. Mm-hmm. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to drive myself on and try and get that wee bit of silverware and towards the end of my career I got it. So that's something I'm, I'm really proud about. Totally, mate, I get that. I mean, I'm an actor, buddy, growing up, man, how many times I went for auditions, you don't get the job, you keep getting knocked back. It's all about rejection, how you come back for that, mate. So to, yeah. yeah. I fully I agree, Stevie, I agree. See, any time I go to Alton Towers, every time I go up to a roller coaster, they, they patch me <laughs> off. Uh, so I know exactly how you feel, Brian. I think it's on a par, mate. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm waiting there as well, too. I'm waiting there, too. <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, mate, it must have, it, it, just winning a medal as a professional footballer must be a buzz. Regardless, you know what I mean? But having to wait as long as you did and finally get it at the end of your career, man, that must have that must have been really special. It was. It was a fact. In fact, like even even at the level that I played at that I won it, like the final day of the season, right, it could have went between a broth or forfa. And we right. had <laughs> we had our own helicopter Saturday. Oh, now for that oh, for guys yeah. at my level. It's special. I mean, aye. You aye. know, I'll never forget we played them. Um, Excuse me, we played Stirling Albion, I think it was. And we had to draw or win the game to win the league. And with two minutes to go in the game, um, we seen the helicopter circling over the stadium. You know, oh, that and, must have been some buzz, get, man. That's how a buzz. Getting, getting a feeling it's quite, it's quite surreal. You know, because you, you don't think, you think this only happens to guys who play at the top, you know. Um, but I've got lots of memories, lots of, lots of good ones. I've got a lot, of, a lot of bad points as well, as I say. But it's how you pick yourself up. And do you know what? Memories that nobody can take away from you. Exactly, mate. Correct. Excellent. Excellent, mate. In terms of managers, what do you think? Best manager you've worked under? Best manager? Um, he actually wasn't my manager at the time. He was um, an assistant anyway. coach at uh, Dumbarton. Jack mm-hmm. Ross. Hibs manager. Jack Ross, aren't you? Aye, brilliant. Yes. He, Aye. Pff, cut a long story short, he's he's going to go places. Mm-hmm. Aye, if the Hibs, if if the Hibs players pull their fucking socks up, then he'll be going places, man. They're, they're, they're no, they're not get, performing for him at all. They've got a new owner coming in as well, so it's going to be a big, big tester for him. But I knew in the early, early days, he had him come down to Dumbarton that he was going to go out on his uh, own. And to be fair, I think I still think he'll kick on. I did I mean, right. watching Sunderland till I die the second series you now, and he's obviously the Sunderland, Sunderland manager in it. Like yes. he's, he's got something about him. You can yeah. see he just needs the right club and the right facilities and the right yeah. right people behind him. He has definitely got something. I think I think there was more two things behind the scenes here as well. Oh. Listen, listen, we could say that for any team, can't we? Definitely. I, I I'll be honest with you, Grado. Uh, tell me to watch this Sunderland till I die, and I I think it should be called Sunderland till I die. I bored them. I can't fucking watch it, man. It's it's so negative. Every single scene is completely negative. And that's not what I'm needing in my life when I'm cooked up in the house. <laughs> no. No, I haven't seen it, so I can't I can't comment on it. I that's not great. Great. I like turning them over five nothing right enough, so it's not that bad. <laughs> that was only negative in the series for me. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> what about worst managers, Brian? Any managers you just didn't click with, you didn't jail with? Um right. I'm gonna put myself in it here, am I? <laughs> Go for it. Um there's two there's there's two names that are not allowed mentioned, shall we say, in the household, my mum and dad's oh, house. Fuck, here we go. Right. Right. Mr. O'Neill. Right. Right. Mr. Calderwood. Oh. Right. Here we go. Enough said. Aye. Two big Aye. names as well. Two big names, Brian. Two big names. Hey, Brian, I, I spoke to Barry Ferguson about his his problems with Paul Le Guin, so don't think you're getting fucking off that, air, that easily, mate. <laughs> All right. So, what was it? What was it about Martin O'Neill that that Martin your O'Neill, dad hated? Um, just didn't like me. Didn't like Aye. me. As simple as that. And uh, had a few things to say to me, and to be fair, didn't like him back. So, Aye. tit for tat. Aye. You know. Um, Jimmy. 
Jimmy was a wee bit more difficult because he wanted to stamp his authority when he came to Aberdeen that pre-season. And after the first day of pre-season, he, um, he absolutely slaughtered me, like slaughtered me beyond belief in front of all the players. Right. And that was him making his mark. You and were I just a fall guy. One, I felt as if I was the one that he was making an example of, shall we say? Aye. Brian, so, sorry, uh, we, we Miller spoke about uh, called Dorwood a wee bit and how um, when he was at Aberdeen with him, he would, he would make you stand up in front of the rest of the team and basically slate each other. Yeah. Was, was that, was, that, must have been, that must have been hellish, man. It's hard enough to play me some of these guys without calling them out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that can be difficult on its own, but what do you do when you're put on the spot? Aye. Because at the end of the day, the manager, the manager's got the final say in things, and you've really got to do as you're told. But that was that was that was a difficult time for me. Difficult time for me when that guy came in. I and I make no I mistake about it. To take the positives for that, you learn a lot of things like that as well. But Brian, and that's how you come back for the kind of situations like you say to them winning medals. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mental toughness. Listen, Aye. Mental toughness. We all we all know that football is a, it's the best game in the world. It's the greatest game in the world. Mm-hmm. But what a lot of people don't know is how ruthless it is. Aye, mm-hmm. aye. And how ruthless and how it can. Well, I, how it actually, can. I, I think that these documentaries that, like the Sunderland Till I Die and the Man City All or Nothing and all that, that does kind of give you a slight insight into it, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Because some of the shit that's, that goes on in the documentaries, you would think it's a fucking soap opera, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, the likes of how many works would. Um, you're, you're taking football is different, obviously, from everywhere else. But how many people is allowed to come into your face and scream in your face and call you this and that? I like if you want to be at this day and age, there's not right. many places will accept it. Now, right. that's where football backgrounds, your language and this and that and everything else, you get away with a lot more, you know. Right. But Listen, that was lads, I, sorry, I need to go for a pee, right? I'm absolutely busting. I'm really sorry. I'm pee. busting. Right, um, see when we come back, uh, Brian, we're going to do a 90 second quiz with you. You see how your football knowledge is, mate, alright? I forgot to tell you about that Can't part. Wait. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> well, 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 right. Speak amongst yourselves, gentlemen. While he's away for a pee, Brian, I might as well ask you, so you're coaching at Airdrie, obviously. Yeah. And obviously with the current state and stuff, he's, you guys have stand a chance of promotion. What do you... Think the outcome. What's your views on the outcome and how the season could be concluded and all that? It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because everybody's got their own opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, me, like everybody else. I mean, you want you want the season. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what league. You want the season to end. Now mm-hmm. there's eight or nine games left for everybody. So, what I'll say is, why should the Premier League try and get played to a finish when we don't? It's a fair point. When, yeah, when the, likes, the likes of us at Airdrie, we, we still have lots to play for. Mm-hmm. Falkirk, who are just above us, have still lots to play for. You know, and teams below us as well. It's a very difficult one. They've got big, big decisions to make. Baby, huge decisions to make. Huge decisions, because I wouldn't like to be the person making the decisions, because I don't think there's no easy answer to it, but I take home what you're saying, it's no fair. We could get played, like the Premier yeah. Premiership gets played and you don't, because like you say, Producer John sitting there as a big fall cut man, they've still yeah. got a lot to play for as well, do you know what I mean? So yes. it's, it's a tough one. Well, that's it, that's it. I mean, what, what separates Wraith Rovers and Falkirk? A point or two? I mean, a point. Right, that's nothing. It's, a, it's one game, it's one game term. You know? Aye. And Falkirk have a superior goal difference, am I right, John? Yeah, aye. And we've got a lot to blame Airdrie for. We've, we've not played well against Airdrie at all this season. Airdrie <laughs> have... <laughs> <laughs> basically pulled our trousers in several times this season so part of the reason that we're in the position we are is because of Airdrie and your good self Brian so thank you for that <laughs> oh man that is that you relieved just you're right Chris Mate, I remember the scene in Austin Powers <laughs> that's what I was like yeah I was fucking busting man <laughs> <laughs> sorry for interrupting the interview lads I do apologise man but it was no either that fishy floor mate you need to go you need to go <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a commode for next week. <laughs> <laughs> right, Brian, we've got a wee quiz now. We do this with every guest we have on every week. 
So that would put a football, your football knowledge to the test with a 90 second quiz. Okay. You up for it? Oh, I'm up for it. Let's see how this goes. I'm not looking forward right. to it. <laughs> now, here's, here's the rules, Brian. Right? You, you must answer, even if it's the wrong answer. You cannot pass. Okay. Right? Um, so even if it's like who scored the goal in the World Cup final and you can't remember and you just say fucking Pierre Van Hoydonk or something like that, it doesn't okay. matter. Right? So, There's a leaderboard, um, Brian. Do you want to hear the, the leaderboard at the moment? We've got Barry Ferguson, who's at top of the leaderboard with 12. David McCracken's at bottom of the leaderboard with 1. Alan Archibald's on 11. Ian Murray is on 7. Lee Miller, Jordan Young, Bob Malcolm are on 6. And Peter Lovenkans is on 3. Okay. Anybody, just any, anybody you're gunning for? I've got to go for the gaffer, haven't I? My own I've gaffer. Got to. So he's got seven. He's got seven. Oh. Okay, here we go. Right. Go on, you get ready. ready. 90 seconds on the clock. 90 seconds starts now. Who did Paul Heckingbottom replace at Hibs? Neil Lennon. What, name the four teams left in the Scottish Cup Celtic. Hibs, Hearts, Aberdeen. Stevie Mary joins St Johnson from what club? Aberdeen. Who is the most northernly SPFL team? St Johnson. Name the current Newcastle boss. Sorry, say that again, Chris. Name, name the current Newcastle boss. Joe Blobs. What year did you get Player of the Season at Airdrie? 2005-2006 Who did Celtic sign Hudson Edward from? PSG What team plays at Oakville View? Stenish Muir Which team is Kelly goalkeeper Brunescu currently on loan from? AC Milan Which English team are nicknamed the Cottagers? Burnley How many goals did you get for Aberdeen? Who is the newest stadium in the Scottish Premiership? St Mirren's Park What is Dumbarton's nickname? Sons What team does Arthur Boric currently play with? Bournemouth Two seconds, I've lost the questions Who currently Who sponsors the League Cup? Betfred Where's the Rose Bowl? Oh, you done well there, Brian You've done really well there I've done oh, all right. Pretty good, pretty good. I can't uh, wait to hear the scores here, man. It's going to be close, man. Go through the wrong answers, first of all, Brian, oh. with you. Um, you got wrong the most northernly SPFL team, so that's the whole of the SPFL, so it's Elgin. Uh, current Newcastle boss is Steve Bruce. Um, it was uh, Juventus that Brunescu's on loan from, from to Kelly. Uh, the Cottagers are Fulham. I think you said, what did you didn't say Fulham, did you? No, you I said, said Burnley. But it was Burnley, oh, okay. wasn't it? Uh, but you got pretty much everything else right. So you just missed out on top spot. You've got 11. Oh, oh no way. way. You beat the gaffer, though. You beat no the gaffer. No way, man. The gaffer, your joint second, you have an Archibald. I'll take that. That's decent, well mate. Done, decent. Man. Well done. I'll take that, boys. That's one of the better ones that we've had, obviously, because you're second top of the list. But <laughs> you've done, <laughs> you done really well. <laughs> Listen, I'm just glad that... Who, who's, the, who, who's the bottom? Cracks? Cracks yeah, is cracks, the bottom, bye. He get one. And you beat the gaffer, he get seven. So you've up there by 11, mate. Oh, good, I've, blown, effort, I've mate. blown him out of the water. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all, Brian. But listen, mate, thank you very much for coming on to the, the show. Really no appreciate it. No problem um, at all. Obviously, it's a bit of a shame Gredo's not here, but he's got a wee bit of a family emergency today, so um, he's not been able to, to take part today. But um, he, he doesn't know anything about football anyway, mate, so he'd have just been asking you what your favourite dinner is. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, thanks, mate. We really appreciate you taking time. Nice out. one, guys. Okay, thank you. Thanks appreciate that, up, man. All Take the best care, for the season. If it starts back up, all the best, man. Take care. Stay safe, boys. I'll see you soon, anyway. Okay. Yeah, okay, Brian. Thank, thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Cheers, boys. Bye, thank you. Bye, bye. Thank bye, you. Bye. Right, Chrissy boy. I think again we get left on our pod, but I think we've done all right. Eh? Aye, we've done no bad. I'm just happy that I've got an extra point on the Legends lottery, mate. 
I need to get my finger out with that, don't I? Listen, I thought if anybody was going to be able to bring in the footballs, it would be wee shell suit Bob. Hey, um, hey, hey, I'm bringing in the football. You are good in that road. I know you are, mate. I you know are you good are. in that road. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but next week, right, I will say this. I will bring on somebody for the Legends Lottery next week. I will. I will right. bring on somebody. Producer John, you've got my word on this. That's recorded, mate. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Right? Oh, I'm confident I will, because you know what? My wife's got a couple of days off next week, so I'll have some time out of the old homeschooling, because that is a big thing, you know what I mean? I'm building gazebos. I'm building tables at the back garden. You're building gazebos? What? Are you fucking recreating Falkirk Stadium in your back garden? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you just start. You just keep slagging him off, Chris. You get any more coming this way? <laughs> I said, I know, I know, it's side my bread's buttered on, my man. Aye, <laughs> right, so hang me. Uh, what, what's, what's going to be happening for the next weekend? Which, what, what can we? Right, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring somebody in. It's gonna be a wee bit left field. Aye. Right? Aye, it's gonna be a wee bit left field. Um, a lovely player, or something? No, he'll do it. No, he's a footballer. He'll do it. He, right. he was a footballer, he's not a footballer anymore, he's retired. Right. But yeah, I'll bring oh, one in, I will. I'll bring one in as well, definitely. I'm pretty sure Grado won't, but I will. I'm just will. seeing if there's any football uh, across the world that we can still watch. Do you know what? You know Belarus? Belarus Premier League is still going at the moment. So why don't we all pick a team from the Belarus League and we can follow their fortunes for next week's... Uh, next week's That's a good show. That's right. a good show. Here's a, here's a couple Belarus. of weeks... Here's a couple of weekend You're fixtures. live scoring it. Couple of weekend fixtures for you from the Belarus Premier League. So pick a team if you fancy the name of them. We've got FC Slutsk versus oh. FC, FC what? Slutsk <laughs> uh, versus FC Redepsk. We've got Torpedo Zodino versus Energetic Biju Minsk. We've got <laughs> FK Gorodea versus Dynamo Minsk. We've got FC Minsk versus BAT Borisov. We've got... Uh, no, BAT ba- ba- Borisov. BAT Borisov. Thing. Right, what well, is that? Can he pick them? Are you... you yeah, they're pretty good. They're the champions. Right, okay. Small I'm event. taking FC BGU Minsk. I'm taking them. Right, you're right. taking BGU Minsk. Uh, uh, we've got Smolovechi versus what Shakhtar is- Sogorovsk. We've got Dynamo Brest. Versus Iceland. Can I t- I'm going to take Dynamo Breast because it says Breast in it. Right. Do you take want, this? See, what was the first one called? Torpedo. Torpedo Zodino. Aye. They're home. Um, They're a, oh, that's a derby. Zodino. That's a derby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're picking that. Gantiris. Gantiris. Bijou Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, well, we'll watch that over the weekend and we'll see right. how it goes. We'll have right, a bad anyway, one that. Just for your reference, uh, Torpedo are 11 to 10 uh, for you, Chris, and Energetic BGU Minsk uh, for you, Stephen, are 23 to 10. Oh, oh there they are. By and the way, I think... that on? Kick off tomorrow, uh, 2 o'clock kick off tomorrow, UK time. Mike, stick like a wee fiver. Come on, the fucking Torpedo, yes! <laughs> the Torpedo! <laughs> <laughs> EGU, man, I'm into that more. Come on, we'll do this, do this. Yeah, so fair. Right, well, hey, Trips, I'm off to go and sit about me. Aye, me too. I'm actually going to uh, go and drag my wee boy out his bed. It's fucking... It's... But Trips, remember to rate, review, subscribe, and also stay in the house and save lives. Do as you tell. Yes. Audio Frontier.